Howdy, guests. Welcome to this week's episode of Science of Westworld. I'm Di Cleverly, and I'll be your host. Remember, there will be spoilers for episodes one through five on this video broadcast. It is not going to be a plot analysis or summary. If you want a really good plot analysis, I suggest you check out my friend Barr over at Barr 2. I'll put the link in the description below. She does a really good job with analysis. What we discuss on this channel is the science of Westworld. So basically what they're showing, what has actually been done in real life, and is what they're showing feasible based on our current technology. And believe me, this week we have a real doozy. Last week, episode five, Ford dropped a huge bomb in the middle about at about 21 minutes in when he was talking to Dolores. He pulled her out of a kind of a Skull celebration parade, brought her down to the lab and started quizzing her on things. Well, he said this one quote, which everybody's talking about. He said, your mind is a walled garden. And beyond it, there blooms flowers that even death cannot touch. Wow. Okay. So, and then he quizzes her about Arnold. So it leads us to believe that Arnold has actually uploaded his mind into Dolores's wetware. Is that possible? What do we know about that? Is that something that people are considering doing? How far has the research advanced if so? And these are the questions that we want to answer in this episode. We will not be able to answer all of them, but hopefully we can at least cover it and kind of whet your appetite for some of the mind uploading science that's actually going on today in the real world. If you haven't noticed it already, the show has definitely been moving in the mind uploaded direction. For example, the little boy that Ford talks to and that we see again in episode five, who talks to the man in black, is a replica of Ford as a child to some degree. And what's really interesting is they have a reality based like play website called Delos Incorporated, which kind of gives you some insight into Westworld. One of the questions you get is, would you mind if you died in an accident if an exact replica of you were made? You know, really giving us a clue to the fact that Arnold is indeed mind uploaded somewhere in the park. So how feasible is mind uploading? Well, the idea has actually been around since the 1970s, but today there's a lot more research going on around it. In fact, do you know that Larry Page has invested billions into the science? of mind uploading. So why are people interested in this? Well, for one of the reasons they're kind of hinting at on Westworld is the idea of immortality. The idea of living forever as an uploaded digital mind that would never wear out or, you know, have the biological constraints and limitations we have today. Another reason would be space travel. If you have to send someone, an astronaut up in the zero gravity for a really, really long time, it might be better to just upload a digital copy of that astronaut and have them pilot the ship and report back. The third area is also possibly something that has to do with Westworld as well. And this is, some people believe that we will not survive as a species the event of singularity. The event of singularity is this concept that AI or computers will actually surpass human beings in intelligence. And when they do, humans become obsolete. Of course, if we uploaded ourselves, we can merge and become transhuman, thus surviving the survival of our species. So in order to understand mind uploading, we first have to understand the mind. Did you know that your brain has about 100 billion neurons? And each one of those has an awful lot of connections, leading to over a trillion connections within one human brain. Each, each of those connections is a neuron. So a neuron is basically this transmitter. It receives signals on one end, usually a neurotransmitter like serotonin, dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, endorphins, you've heard of them. And they activate the neuron to send an electric, an actual electric impulse up the neuron, and then it will do something at the end. It will either pass along the information, in the case of the brain, in the case of motor neurons, it'll cause your body to move. 
this is a fairly simple concept and they've actually been able to replicate this somewhat in the lab where you have a receptor with sensors and then it causes an impulse to generate and receive information on the other end. So how do we get that information up into a computer? Well, they've already started. They're starting to map pieces of the human brain and pieces of mouse brain and rat brain. The Blue Brain Project, which is uh, the link below, I've linked if you want to take it out, and some of the other projects are trying to make what they call connectomes, which are connection maps between all of the neurons and their functions. It's thought that this is the first step to trying to digitally upload a brain. So how do you map that? I mean, well, the way that we track this is through MRI. MRI depends on magnetic field. Did you realize that every time your axon is activated and you have an electrical impulse traveling one way, you actually have a magnetic field traveling the other way. Um, so the MRI machine can actually track these connections in which direction the impulses are going. And they're using very, very thin slice technology to figure out what all the neurons are doing in a living thinking human being, a living thinking rat or mouse. So now, once we've mapped the human brain, then what do we do? Well, the next step is that we need to transfer one trillion plus connection data onto a blank late waiting to accept it. And here's kind of where the AI comes in. The idea is that you can kind of imprint onto the software all of that data that's in your human mind computer. Now, right now this is not possible. You would need a zettabyte of data to upload. That's all the digital content on the world right now to upload a human brain. However, there's something called Moore's Law, which means that our technology advances in an exponential pattern. So if Moore's Law holds true, the transhumanists are really hopeful that we would be able to map a human brain and upload it by, say, 2045 to 2065. So about 50 years from now. But there might actually be a shortcut. There might be a pathway that's actually quicker and will emulate a person's personality, thought process, and feelings onto an AI neural network. In fact, that's already been done. You know, it, it was very stunning to me, and you probably have had a similar experience because I think this is becoming more and more common. The idea that a person, you can visit them, you can digitally, you know, read the text or see their pictures or read their thoughts and feelings, and they still exist in the digital world online. And it's a kind of unsettling feeling to know that. Well, there happened to be this woman, her name is Eugenia Kudaya, and I have the link to the story below, and she had a best friend named Roman. And Roman died in a car accident, and he was very young, and Eugenia was very upset. Well, it turns out Eugenia is the co-founder of an app for an AI um, research, and she decided to create an AI chat box, and she had hundreds of texts and lots of pictures and lots of information about her friend Roman. And she loaded that all up into the AI chat box. And now friends and family as a memorial can actually have a conversation with Roman. So how is this different than your typical AI chat box, which all of us have seen um, on the internet? The reason it's different is that it is Roman. It is his thoughts and feelings. He can share memories. They talk about a concert they went to. They talk about a joke they shared. People in the family can have memories. So those are his thoughts, feelings, and memories and opinions loaded up onto an AI network and it can communicate back with you. I don't think that Arnold in our story of Westworld is that. I think that Arnold is actual mind upload. Um, but I wonder sometimes if some of the hosts don't have some people's personality kind of embedded into them. They do talk about the personalities and I wonder where they, and the last point about why mind uploading is so difficult is one more of a philosophical question. Even if you can replicate the digital mind, the way that Eugenia did with her friend Roman on her app, is that Roman? Is he real? Is his consciousness in there? 
No, I don't think so. So it might, does it matter? Like we can't tell if it's Roman or not. So does it matter to us if it's Roman? But it would matter to Roman if his consciousness got transferred. Because remember what I said was, one of the reasons people are looking to do this is immortality. They want to live on. They want their consciousness, their soul, their spirit, their thoughts, their dreams, their hopes, their loves, whatever. They want all that to live on in the digital mind or they wouldn't be doing this. So I have one more thing that I always like to end with like the big question because of course I don't know the answer is that in the show we see the maze and Teddy says, to the man in black about the maze. And now this is in the preview for next episode, so I'm not really sure where it's going to go. But he tells him the maze is the sum of the whole of a man and his life. And if you look at that maze, in the center of the maze, there's a little man. So I start wondering if the maze is not the way or the path to digital mind uploading and immortality in Westworld. And that's the bigger picture. And I also wonder if that's what people are trying to steal. I would like you to like and subscribe to this video. It would really help me with the channel and help motivate me to make more of these videos. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.